Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's your homeboy, E Short, hanging out in his man room, as usual. This is the e &L Sports Talk Show with my homeboy, Les Miller. What's up, Les? E, what's going on, baby? Everything is good on this end, man. How you doing? Yeah, same here. I'm doing good, man. We have a very special guest today, a gentleman that uh, we all watched play when we were kids. And um, he left a very, very strong mark on the history of Brooklyn basketball. And, um, you know, one of many guys that we would be remiss and something wrong with us if we didn't get him on the show. Um, have a lot of respect for this gentleman. And um, he asked to be on, and, and rightfully so, because he deserves it. Um, it's our homeboy, Erasmus legend, Bernard Boyd. Okay. How you guys doing? Pretty good, doing brother. Great. How you? I'm blessed, man, because God woke us all up this morning. I yeah. agree. Yes, sir. Tell the public and all of the viewers a little bit about yourself, my brother. Well, I'm, um, I started playing sports at the age of 10, but it wasn't basketball. It was baseball. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I, I lived in the Gowanus Projects with oh. Seymour, Henry Kinsey, you know, and um, basketball wasn't a love at the first because I was doing best. I was doing baseball and martial arts. Mm. And then one day a coach came in the, that we had in the community and said, man, you bigger than everybody. Why don't you uh, come out for basketball? I ain't never touched the ball. So I came out. The only thing I had was a hook shot off the backboard. <laughs> and, that, you know, I did it. And the next thing I know, we started going outside the projects and um, playing everywhere. And I started to enjoy the game. But I also enjoyed baseball because I was I can pitch, I can hit, and I can run. But what happened, one day I was pitching, and one of the batters put his thumb on the out, inside of the bat, tried to bunt, and I broke his thumb. I was devastated. So I let baseball go. So I started playing basketball. And um, I met a guy named... Benjamin, I, I can't think of his name. He's from um, Restoration. You guys might know him. He was there before Gill and Murden and all of that. Mm. And um, he took us in. He got us jobs. You know, we was in the community of Best Eye, Peyton the Gates. So, you know, he, he would take us around, you know, just playing different tournaments. And I never forget it. That, and I, that's when I met Gill came along. And at that time, I was a, like a freshman in high school. And um, I kind of missed my first two, three months, weeks, weeks of basketball at Erasmus because I had fractured my ankle playing outside ball. And they always used to tell us, don't play outside ball, you know? So yeah. <laughs> I got hurt because I would have started, but I got hurt. And, and, you know, I had to sit there and watch Gary Atla and – some of the other older guys, Russell and Daryl Sills. Mm -hmm. And they had a good day. You know, Mr. Bunyan taught me a lot. So what I decided to do, I said, I'm going to keep playing with Gil and, and better my skills. And as I uh, continued playing with Gil, I noticed that I got a little better and better. And before the freshman year, I, I was just starting playing a whole lot more than I was when I first got in. And it just went from there, guys. I I, I played with a lot of the coaches. I played with George Murden. I played with Gil. I played with uh, a coach in, I forgot his name, in the, in the, um, in the Bronx. Not the Bronx, but the uh, radio station, WLIB. Mm. And we would always play against W Ellis, whatever, the other station, L I B. And um, you know, <laughs> I yeah, I, I just continued. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I continued playing. Then one he got us in a tournament in the city. And we played eight games and it was part of the NBA. And my team was first. I had Kenny Charles on my team. I had Jeff Jones on my team. I had Willie. Davis on my team, 
and a couple of other guys. Um, I forgot their name. But anyway, we lost in the championship, but we had an all-star team, and I got picked to go over to Trinidad with the NBA, me, Kenny, Sam Worthen. Yeah, Sam Worthen, he played with somebody else. But we went, and, and that was my experience. I never got an opportunity to really play professional. You know, I tried out overseas a couple of teams. Rodney Parker helped me do that. But other than that, uh, playing in Forster Park helped me out a whole lot. Right. But that's when Rodney shared with me, said, man, I can get you in school. Because after high school, I didn't go straight to college. I went to prep school. I'm, I'm, I know I'm rumbling, but uh, this is how I was. I went to prep school. Mm -hmm. and I went to MCI. And I didn't know what the heck, where I was going, Maine. So when we first got there, I always explore. So I wanted to walk around and see what was going on. And I didn't see me. I didn't see me at all. And the only me I had was Mario Donovan. Mario Donovan. And a young man uh, named Roland from who played in Queens somewhere. Okay. So where's MCI? Where was, was MCI at? MCI, MCI is in Pittsfield, Maine. Wow. Where train goes, train goes through the town, and you gotta wait an hour and a half before the train passes. <laughs> you know, and what it did for me, it helped me with my grades. It helped me focus on how to study because Monday through Thursday, right after dinner, we had to go straight to our rooms and study. Mm -hmm. And they would come by and tutor us, help us, whatever. So it kind of helped me because I didn't have the grades at the time to go to college after I got out of high school. Mm -hmm. But I did good. I passed the SATs and everything. And we had a good season at MCI. Matter of fact, I put them on the map. Because after that we had followers, we had some followers. Mm -hmm. But uh, I got uh, office from the play up in Maine, Maine University, Niagara, mm -hmm. and I decided. I said, "Man, I can't take this snow no more because mm -hmm. it snows up there." Oh yeah, yeah. yes I sir. Mean, it snowed. <laughs> yeah. So I said, hey, "Let me go back home." So I, you know, I just came back home not knowing what I was going to do, but I played, just played in tournaments. I didn't get a chance, and I regret it. I didn't get a chance to play up in that rougher. I wow. had an opportunity, but I didn't take it. I don't know why back then, because I didn't have nobody back then in my ear mm -hmm. saying this, saying that. I, most of it I had to do on my own. Right. You know, but I played with a lot of the guys that were in Gowanus that were older than me because the uh, the young, the young, the guys I played with, I was too physical, too strong. So I had to go play with the older guy. And that's how I learned how to get around, do certain things to get to that basket. You know, I didn't, at the time, I didn't really have a jump shot. It came over, it came over time, but I knew how to get to that board. I knew how to rebound and I knew how to run the court. So, you know, I went to Foster Park one day, and I'm, I'm rattling because I'm missing some stuff, but I can't, I'm not going to go back. I was playing Foster Park one day, and we won the, whatever tournament it was, we won. And I rode a bike, fixed bike, from my freshman year all the way till I got to college, helped my legs and stuff. Oh, so you were riding, you were riding a fix? I was riding a fix for every <laughs> tournament, everywhere, everywhere I went. Well, just and, um, for but just for everybody's understanding, so that they'll know, a fixed yeah. bike is a bike that the back wheel is kind of like cemented, so that there's no derailleur, and so the tire constantly turns and the pedals. There's never or you never get a break because yeah. you're always and you had to use, you had to use your legs to that's learn right. how to stop it, <laughs> and if not, yeah. jump off. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but. That's right. Right. But uh, like I said, I was playing in, um, at Forster, and I was getting ready to get on the bike, go home. And back then in 1972, all the coaches, all the coaches came to New York for some reason. 
Bill Fly, uh, uh, Arnold Duggar, um, Keith Fryson. These are the guys I knew that I played mm-hmm. against and played up. Uh, and Danny Odoms, you know, because Danny played at Force. He's one of the best at Force. Yeah, and Mario and, and Fly. Mar- Mario, yeah, Mario Donovan. But I, I, I got. I'm gonna go back a little bit. There was a little white boy named Michael O'Donnell. Mm. He played with me. He went up to prep school with me. Mm. I tell you, I never forget. Pete, Pete Davis was guarding him in three boy, mm. and he played like Pete Mavs with the ball. I ain't guaranteed. I don't know if Pete remember, but he broke Pete's ankles. <laughs> <laughs> That's how bad he was, you know. But I, I give him my props because he used to get me the ball at a rap. He gave, gave me the ball at prep school because he said them other guys they not doing nothing. So you right. know, we we became real good friends, you know. So as I was like saying, I was getting on my bike to leave, and the coach walked up, up to me. He said, "Hey, my name is Chuck No." I said, "Yeah." He said, "Uh, I like what I seen." He said, "You you play hard." You quick to your feet. He said, uh, I would like to talk to your parents. So I said, No problem. So he put my bike in the back of his car. We drove to my mother, to my parents' house in Gowanus mm. in the living room. And he said to my mother and father, he said, My name is Chuck No. I'm a college scope coach from Virginia Commonwealth. I just watched his son play. And I won't give him a full ride scholarship. That was the only school that ever approached me like that. Mm. You know, I had I had visits. I visited Long Beach when, when Dallas was there, but my mother didn't want me to go to no Long Beach way out in California. Mm. <laughs> so I said, okay. He said, I want to give you a, a visit. And I went down there that weekend. And you remember Moses. Malone was still in high school then. Right. And I got a chance to, because his cousin was my roommate at Virginia Commonwealth. So I got really close with Mo. And he I just remember he never spoke, man. He was just a big, big, big guy. He was bigger than everybody he played with in high school. So, you know, the coach, like most of the coach promised you the world when they when they in front of your parents and you. Right. So when I got to Virginia Commonwealth, he said I was going to start. I was this. We went through the training. I'm beating everybody in the distance runs. We had to run 10 miles. We had to do sprints. And, and I'm beating the seniors. And the seniors were David Edwards from Queens. Mm-hmm. Uh, you remember Jesse Dark? I don't know. He played with the Knicks. Jesse Dark was from, he was from Virginia. Okay. Then there was another, our center was seven feet. His name was Bernard Harris from Norfolk, Virginia. And even though I didn't have to compete against them, but me and Jesse Dart would always come in first and second in all the runs and stuff, lifting weights. So I, I thought, you know, hey, I'm, I'm going to play. And I didn't play, man. He stepped me on that bench. Wow. As a freshman, man, you know, and they back then they didn't really want to play freshman, but they, if you were good enough, you played. But he told me that, right? And and he was a very well known coach, Coach No. Yeah, yeah, Chuck No, yeah. And he just broke my spirit because I always started where you know how it is that coming out of high school, you you the man, you played, and it was a shock to me to sit on the bench and watch. My guys that I played against, Odom, Fly, you know, and I forgot who else went to Austin Peay. Mm-hmm. And I, I never forget it. He didn't play me that game. Right. And Fly, every time Fly came across half court, he said, I'm going to get you for not playing my, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to play, you know, because he was, he taunted our coach and they beat us by one, no, two. Mm-hmm. 
but he put me in the game with a minute and 50 seconds to, to guard Danny Oda. Wow. My teammate from Erasmus. It broke my spirit, man, you mm-hmm. know. And then when we had the game against him at home, he left me He left me home. Well, I was like, I was like what did I do? Did I do something wrong? Mm-hmm. So, no I explanation? Nothing, man, nothing. I, I, I went through the whole season. Same thing, two, three minutes, two, three minutes. So what I did... I said, I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm a transfer. But I remember if you transfer to another uh, college, you had to sit out. Right. Because Virginia Union was right there. Oakley was there. Mm-hmm. A couple of my buddies, uh, I don't, I, I think, like, what's his name? Y'all know him because he played at Force Park, too. Ooh, his face is right here. But anyway, he moved. To, he's in California now. And he was telling me, transfer. To Virginia Union, man, I make sure I'm on the team, and I ain't as good as you. That's what he used to always say. Mm-hmm. And I said, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to summer school and, and get my grades. See, I was smart. Most guys just leaving, and whatever they had, they had it. I thought about it. I said, I'm going to go to summer school, take a couple of more classes. And after the summer school, Called my dad up, packed my bags, and I was gone. Mm-hmm. And that was it with my four year school that I was supposed to really be playing with. And what's so funny about it, one of the, the other guard in um, Jimmy at that time that was coming out with Moses Malone was Gerald Henderson. He went to the, that's who coach went and recruited. And I used to tear him up in the summer league. Virginia and all that, you know, you know, we played against him. Then when he came, you know, to to visit, and I was like, wow. But this guy wound up going to Boston, winning championship, right? You know, so you know, I see those things. I just say, what this wasn't meant for me, you know. Right, right. So, right. like I said, I went home, home, and and, and um, uh, Rodney Parker kept saying, man. I got another school for you, man. He said, I don't want to send you to a four-year school because you're going to have to sit out. He said, I'll do this fake by sending you to a junior college. So I said, yeah. And it was Southern Idaho Junior College in Idaho, another far yeah. midway state, mid- Midwest state. Father, I said, this is the last school you're going to transfer to. We ain't going to it. But they didn't want me to go. Right. But at the time, they were in the, in the country. And I went, he picked me up from the airport, straight to the gym. There wasn't no unpacking bags, put him in the dorm. We went straight to the gym. But we had, they had, he had practice. He put me, he said, hey, put some gear on me. And I, I, I was... No, and I guess I was I just tore them up. <laughs> and he said, man, I wasn't expecting you to, you know, but we wind up going all the way, Southern Idaho, all the way to the National. Mm. And we lost the uh, Texas Wesleyan by three. Okay. You know, we were 33 and two. So, you know, I, I, I had a good experience there. Right. Then from okay. there, again, they wanted me to go to America. Is that a mm-hmm. That's the name. And I, I didn't want to do that. You know, I just went ahead and decided cause the, uh, to go back. Virginia came to the national tournament. They wanted me to come back. But I, I, I didn't trust them. I didn't trust Coach No after that. And I, I just said, man, I'm going I'm to I'm just go home again. Mm-hmm. And then at the last minute, my coach from junior high, name, I mean from Idaho, his name Coach Boyd Grant. He went from Idaho to, uh, what is it? Uh, what's the team in Vegas? Uh, uh, UNLV. College. UNLV. He went there. And he won the championship at the guard. 
And so he said, B, I got something for you. Because his name was Boyd Grant. My name was Bernard Boyd. So we were, we really got close. So he decided, I got a couple of schools for you, man. And um, you take your pick. So I just went to an NAI school. It's called Phillips University in Enid, Oklahoma. That, that's where the Price Boys are from. Mm, yeah, I know, play, I know. I know. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. And um, that's where I went. Finished. Got my degree. Because I told my mother I wasn't coming back home without yeah. it. Mm-hmm. I came back with a, a, a major in history and a minor in physical education. Excuse me, Doug. You know, what, what so, you, what, what's the timeline on this? What years are we talking about? Okay, we're talking about, uh, you want me to go back to prep school? Well, okay, so you, you, you got a Erasmus in 72, right? No, I got an Erasmus in 69. Oh, 69. Okay. Yeah, 69. Okay. But you finished okay. that From 70. This, you, you finished what, in 72? Yeah, I finished 72. Okay. Yeah, I, and, and, and to go back, I was at Dittmas Junior High School. Okay. okay. I was at Dittmas. That's where I started at, at Junior High School, Dittmas. Okay. Well, how are you going, how are you going to Dittmas and everything. living over in, in Gowanus, though? I'm gonna take you back now. Now, I was in an elementary elementary school five blocks away. Okay, you gotta remember back then you got you're not born yet. They had that segregation thing, right? Right. And they came in the public school and told the principal that he needed to bust some of the kids, right, out for the white schools. Right. And I went. I'm now. I just want you to hear this. I had people from um, Tompkins, uh, Lafayette Garden, Tompkins, Kingston projects. We all got tra- transferred to this junior high school. I, I mean, to yeah, do, from junior no, uh, yeah, junior high school, right. Yeah. And we got to take the bus. We getting stoned and rocked and aged. I was like, wow. But then I was so good in sports at that time. They didn't really mess with me. Then I transferred to Dittmas. We had to go through the same thing. And then I decided, you know, to play sports. And everybody kind of knew me in the community. So I didn't have no problem. Them other Marcy and Red Hook. They used to go fight. They want to fight. I used to just get on the bus, <laughs> cross the end of Prospect Park, get the F train home, because that's how my parents were. Yeah. And I never forget it, man. And I, I never did it again. I, I got to share this story. At Dittmas, every Friday, all the projects used to go play hooky. I don't know. They come to school and leave. <laughs> and I found out there was a party in at somebody's house. So... <laughs> You know, that urge hit me, and I kept saying, Man, don't do it, do it. Don't do it, do it. So I decided to do it. It was in Tompkins Project. I'll never forget. On the fourth floor, and it snowed like crazy. Cops came and started taking people out. I threw my coat out the window. It was fourth floor. I threw my coat out the window. Boom. Jump. Boom. Put my coat on. Got back on that train, went all the way back to Dittman's. So I'm thinking, I'm cool. I sneak in the back door and the assistant principal standing there saying, oh, you thought you was getting back in, huh? I want to see your mother or your father on Monday. So the whole weekend, I'm like, oh. And, and then I didn't tell my mother and father to Sunday. And my mother went up to the school. And that's when I decided I would never do anything crazy at school again. Mm-hmm. My mom, mom's cried. And I never seen my mother cry. Wow. Wow. You know, so right there I turned it around and I decided that school was more important than doing the things that I wasn't supposed to do. Oh playing you was you was all into the hooky thing though, boy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wasn't into it. I wanted I mean to that, one time. On. I got, that one time. That one time I mean. <laughs> Yeah, that that the devil had the devil got me, man. I I, I wanted to see it. I'm like, dang, it looked, you know, everybody partying and dancing. 
man, never again, yeah. never again. I'm, in, I'm impressed that, that you jumped so off like the floor. I'm, I'm impressed that you jumped out of the fourth floor window too. Yeah, <laughs> but the snow had snow. It had snow, so it was deep. Yeah. Hey, man, I had to go, bro. I wasn't getting <laughs> caught. If I, 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 I wouldn't know. My and I had a strict dad. He didn't play that mess. He didn't play none of it. He used to say, "If I tell you to do something, you do it. Yeah. If your mother tell you something to do it, you do it." He said, "Anything in this house needs to be." Good. Don't wait for your mother to do it. You see, so I came from a strict. My father was a construction worker, and he was big and built, and he didn't take no mess. So I, right. I after that, after that, that was it. That was sixty nine. So from Ditmas, I went to Erasmus, mm-hmm. and it was Joe. It was Joe Eli Odom. And we could never, Jer, uh, Be- uh, Barry came the year after, and he mm. and all them guys. My senior year, I could never get them guys to get their grades together, man. Mm. So every time we had to play against Fly and Phil to see who moved on, I was always short. Mm. You know, our big, men, our big men didn't have the grade. So, you know, I just went ahead and did what I had to do at Dittman. Coach Bunyan gave me the green light and I took it from there, man. You know, yeah. and, and there were a lot I of players at Erasmus, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of players that could have played, but grades, you know, even Charlie Jones. I don't know if you know Charlie Jones. Yeah. And yeah. and um his dad was at Erasmus. Bad ball player, touch the back of the top of the backboard, mm. but he never would play because he was on them drugs. Mm. He never played, but, but and, his and two Bunyan sons, had, Lamont and, Bunyan, and Charlie. And, yeah, but Bunyan had so many good mm. players that even guys that probably could have played, they like I, because of the way he was, it turned them away. Like Stephen Porter, Franklin Tummins was there. My my brother was there. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Wow. And yeah, so it Bunyan is, was real funny about who we picked, man. Yeah, that's why. That's why Les and I didn't go there. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we were because we, <laughs> right, we were at Walt Whitman. Oh man! Right, we were supposed to go there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 You know, okay. Yeah, so we, how was, we played you know, against them. Yeah, how was that experience for you? I played, at I, I played against Bill DeSee. My now experience it's, yeah. was great. As far as, far, as, far as me getting around, learning my my my, my uh, teachers, the only problem I had was just how sometimes, like you said, and some of these guys with my friend, Bunyan wouldn't let them into the gym class to see how or see what they had. And, and it was a lot of guys. But other than that, I really didn't have no problem at Erasmus. I We did have the problem, like I was telling you when I was in junior high school. They didn't, it was a black and white thing at Erasmus. And we would have riots. And stuff like that. That's the only thing I never really understood. Mm-hmm. But we always, because we had a lot of Black Panthers and militant um, students that went there, and they would protest right there that church across the street from, and they were there, and, and the white folks in the neighborhood, the Italians, whoever it was, they didn't want us here. But I had heard about it before I went there. I was really supposed to go to Boys High. But moms didn't want me to go to all boys school, mm. and I wish I did because it would keep Mel Davis had had already graduated, but it was right. Pete Davis, um, <laughs> boy Gus Williams, all them guys. I played against all of them, mm. you know. And I and to go back to junior high school, I played against World Be Free and O'Neill Terrence. They was at Bill to see. Mm. And they never beat me. That's the only thing I'm saying. They uh-huh. never beat me until they got we got into high school our senior year. And they that's the year they went undefeated. And right. we was the only team of 
came close to beating them by three, four, five, some points. Like, no, matter of fact, two points. Right. It might have been one because I stole the ball from O'Neal and went to lay it up, and the ref called a foul on me. And that's how they won that game. The wow. fix was in. <laughs> yeah, I'll never forget that, that game. And I know I have to tell, and I hope the world is listening, because I heard Barry talk about it. Mm-hmm. I was gardening. Jump. His knee, his knee busts my nose open. <laughs> and his lip busts my, his, 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 his feet busts my lip. Wow. That's how high, and I never forget it. Mm. I was pissed. I had to come out the game. They stopped the bleeding. 50 points, bro. I went off. Wow. I never forget it. <laughs> and um, I, 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 I remember playing them at home, did the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I said, wow. And then when later on, these guys went on to be good ball players. And I said, damn, I played against all these guys too, right. man. You know? Yeah. But we all built each other. You know, we all, and that's how I looked at it. Because mm-hmm. like I told you, I played against a lot of the older guys. Right. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the physical part of it mm-hmm. because I was too physical to play with my age. Right. You know, so, yeah, I, I, like I said, college, high school, everything, wherever I went was a good experience for me. And I learned how other people live, other cultures, nice people take you into their home treat you just like you're one of them. Right. You know, right. and that's the experience I had from Maine to Idaho. Now Virginia was a little shaky. Mm-hmm. Because Virginia, you know, it was it was one of them states that didn't like blacks too much. So mm-hmm. I didn't like the, I didn't like it too much anyway, really. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of glad I did leave, but not on the, them circumstances. Right. right. And it, and it's changed. I mean, it's not the way it was, but I could just imagine, yeah. you know, the kind yeah, of turmoil and, and how you felt being a student athlete in a place that made promises and they couldn't, you know, deliver for whatever reasons. And, and was there ever any kind of explanation or um, anything None. provided? None. None. And I, I really didn't care at when he didn't play me against my bro- my brothers that I played against at St. John's and all the other different places, kind of broke my spirit, man. And I didn't want to know anything else. I just knew that wasn't the school for me. Mm. Mm. But you did deserve. And I should have went to you know. And I, yeah. I, I, I was gonna say, Bernard, that you did deserve an explanation. An explanation yeah, I know. Yeah, you deserved an explanation. As, as a student athlete, like, how do you not explain to an athlete why he's not getting playing time, or, 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 or even better, on the positive side, what is it that you need to do to get better if you're not playing up to his satisfaction? Right, right. Mm-hmm. And to not tell you that is like, why do you well, have he did that job? He, yeah, he, 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 he kind of did say it. He was hated to his seniors. And it was it was six of them. Six seniors. Wow. Yeah. And he catered to them. Rudy Jack little Rudy Jackson from Queens and like I said, Dave Edwards from Queens. And those are the guards. Because I had I, I had to play guard and small forward. Mm-hmm. Then they had this other guy that played small forward named Dickie Red. Dickie Ray at the Disney Commonwealth. So I had to play, when he wanted me to play the small forward, I had to play against him. And, you know, but all those guys I became friends with. You know, I had a good right. bond with them. And I really wanted mm-hmm. to stay because, you know, and they like, you know, all of the teammates like me. Jesse Dart used to take me home with him, you know, and, and you know, just be around our people. Right, you know, but it, like I said, uh, Virginia Commonwealth was a good experience, but at the same time, it, it was uncomfortable for me. Right, right, and it's funny how the players—they're never a problem. 
because they're going to embrace their, they're embracing their teammates. But it's always that separation of the coach, the adults in the room and the students and that, that, you know, difference that happens that's never talked about. And that's what yeah. causes players to either leave or, like you said, break in the person's spirit, man. And that's one of yeah. the things that is really important as an athlete, even as a regular student, because, you know, when you go to college, it's a different level of, you know, how education is and how you study. So right. to have somebody or, or an entity at that university break your spirit, that you're a student athlete. So if they break your spirit as an athlete, believe me, your, your spirit's broken as a student as well. Yeah. You know? And, but uh, I didn't have great problems. I, mm -hmm. I, from from going to prep school, kind of prepared me for what I was, you know, going to have to do. And I, I stuck with it. But, you know, I know a lot of plays that during my era, went to school and they just came home. You know, they just came home I, for whatever reason. And because I talked to a lot of players in my era and they said, man, I went to school, coach ain't played me. I went to school, he cut my scholarship. You know, stuff like that was going on at that time. Right. You know? And like I said, I wish I would have played a little bit more in tournaments in Brooklyn, Manhattan, to put my name out there even more. Right. But a lot of people say they know me. Yeah, you know me, but you don't. You know of me, but you really don't know me. Right, right, right. right. And like I said, my moms and dad was a little, prote little protective. Mm -hmm. so they didn't want me to go certain places. So that's, that's how I really got started with my journey. And I, I say my journey for me was best thing ever happened to me because growing up in Gowanus, man, it wasn't, a, it wasn't pleasant. Mm -hmm. And a lot of my friends, a lot of my friends that were close to me, our mothers and fathers was close. They all died at age 15 with dope needles in their hand in their mother's bathroom. Wow. Can you imagine that for my friends? Wow. Wow. Yeah, and that was during the and era we, that heroin was like a big thing. You know, the Vietnam was War, a big thing. heroin. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, and I don't think anybody would, would you know, um, dispute, you know, the type of environment that we're all growing up in that era, you yeah. know, because it was taking people that were, like you said, friends, neighbors, and yeah. um, you don't know what kind of struggles a person is going through. Yeah. You know, so yeah. um, if you make it through, then that's a blessing. Yeah, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. So you had a so so basically, you were you know taking yourself and still persevering through all of the things that have occurred. It's kind of made you the person that you are today. Mm -hmm. you know? Definitely, definitely. You know, it's like well, uh, I'm gonna go back to right now. You know, I had a heart replacement, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And I spent six months in the hospital when I only should have spent maybe three months. Mm -hmm. But I had a heart transplant and all kinds of stuff with my body started going haywire. So I had to actually stay in the hospital longer. Mm -hmm. But when I found that out, I really was a new person, a real new person. Because he didn't have to save me. He could have let me die on that operating table. He could have let my old heart go and I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. So I'm thankful for a lot of things that I did or what I didn't do. I apologize to all people that I've done something to. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, life is not given to anybody. We all can lead the day. Yep. So I'm, I'm thankful for that, man, you know, and... I'm thankful for you two brothers too, man. Um, for y'all to step out and say, hey, we're going to do differently. And I know you know what I'm talking about, Eric, because you was with that other guy and I don't know what happened, but for you to do this tells me you knew it was something that God led in your heart to do. And mm -hmm. like I said, I thank 
both of y'all. I hope y'all reach out to other people and let them hear their story and where they've been, what they did, you know, because basketball is eternity. I may not play when y'all play, but I played before y'all. Mm. And somebody played before me, you know, and I analyzed it. I, I grasped all of it, you know, but. Yeah, uh, yeah I appreciate that, Brennan. I, um, I know just how you feel. Mm. Um, going through a lot of stuff, you know, health wise and um, truly, I truly understand. And when I decided to do this, um, I mean, I see, you know, you see a lot of things out there, Bernard, and, you know, I mean, Les and I talk all the time and, you know, you, you start to find out, man, that, you know, like you said, it's a fraternity and, you know, like my calling to some, I might probably have like 50 other callings, but one of my callings is, you know, to historically, you know, remember, you know, the history of the game because I, I respect it so much and yes. I see that there's yes. value in it. And from that value of just the sport, not just of the sport itself, but the people that are participating, you know, you take the wrapper off and you open up the box and you see all of these guys that have played before and after and, and now. And, you know, people are forgotten. We, we're always forgotten. And, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I think I kind of like, like it bothered me. And, you know, when, like you said, from, you know, having you know, health issues, you start looking at your mortality. And when I look at my mortality, it's kind of like, you know, what is what are people going to remember about Eric Short? You know, so and then we all ask that question. Yeah. And so that kind of like I turned down on everybody else. Is what right. is that people going to remember is their memories. And I just had a vision of using a tool that I was using for my own personal use to use it for others. Mm. And that's how all of this kind of like got started. And it happened in less than 24 hours. I decided yeah. from the problems that I had with yeah. you know who, 24 hours later, I decided yeah. to do this because I saw the value in helping people that I respect. And I mean that from the bottom yeah. of my heart, man. I, 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 yeah, I, 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 I I'm going to start crying, man. I, I'm honestly, man, because no, don't cry. this don't means cry, so man. much. Yeah. No, but seriously, I, I do that because it's necessary, but it's needed. Yeah. The level of respect, Les and I talk about this all the time, the respect that we have for people that we played with against, you know, we're grown ass men. And, you know, yeah. we know everybody's trials and tribulations and understand it. So it's like, this, we're giving back. You know, and, and we're sharing and, and opening up people's eyes to, to say, look, look, look what we've done. And it's not look what I've done, look what we all have done to make Brooklyn what it what it what everybody sees. You know, and so with that yeah. being said, you know, it's kinda like this is what it turned into. So there was like no way in God's green earth, man, that you would not have been on the show and anybody else in the future. You yeah, know, yeah, we're, we're, you. our goal is to interview everybody. And I mean yeah. everybody. Yeah. I hear you. You know, we how gonna miss you some less. How did you and Les get together? <laughs> huh? How did you how you got how you and Les got together? I mean, yeah. Bernard, how, we Bernard, we've been friends since uh, um since uh, we were born. Basically. Whoa. Our parents wow. were friends. Yeah. Our parents yeah. were friends. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, yeah. okay. And we yeah. grew up what on high school. We grew up on Rutland Road, went? but we grew up on Rutland Road. No, what high school? What high school y'all went to? Well, I went to Midwood. Les went to Brooklyn Tech. I went to Tech. Yeah. Oh. And okay. we were supposed okay. we were both supposed to go to Erasmus because we yeah, went to I mean, Whitman, which is right down the street. So I'm glad y'all didn't. <laughs> <laughs> but yo, Bernard, you, but my sister went to school with you. My sister Joanne, Joanne Miller. Joanne, oh really? Yeah, that's my sister. She, oh wow! She, yeah, yeah. Oh okay, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you, you should, you you should, yeah, you should know all, all of our um, older brothers and sisters because you should know my brother Mark. And you, yeah. and you should, and if you know, if you knew Joanne, you would know my sister Tony. Tony. Tony Short. Mm -hmm. And 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 so um, like we we have a lot of ties with the Flatbush area. And, yeah. Uh, okay. But okay. you know, but to this day, you know, all of the Flappish people, they're our people, man. So yeah, 
That's right. I hear you. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Nothing wrong with it. Yeah, you know, we we were we were we were avid uh um Friedman sporting goods shoppers, man. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, and 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 busting Dutch reforms ass like on the basketball court when we played against them in CYO. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and we know we know Flappers very well, man. And um, and good. watching you guys play because I know you've played in the old boys high field basketball court, right? Yeah. On Rutland Road and Troy Avenue. Yeah. Uh-huh. We were watching y'all play. Yeah, that's when we were watching you guys play, man. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. so it's kind of like seeing, like, you know, you, O'Neal Tarrant and Fly, Ed Searcy. I mean, yeah. we, sit back, we were sitting back saying, I want to be like that guy, man, you yeah. know? And then messing no, around with know. your boy Rodney Parker, you know, going to Forster Park, that's another world that just gave us nothing but um, great players to watch and to emulate, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, Rodney, Mario, was good, even though he had his issues, he was a good, he, was, he yeah, had a good heart. Yeah. And all of the guys that played there, you know, Danny Odoms and Mario Donawa. Mario used to always like. Don, Don me, Levy. Yeah. Yeah, he's a, yeah, he is always like, like, give me like points, like little short, you know, do this, do that, you know, you ain't nothing, little short, you know. I'm like, what are you yeah. talking about, man? You know, <laughs> um, but I mean, we were young, but but it was like reinforcement from the guys right, that are exactly. older. So, you know, you turn around, you know, you do something great, you turn around and you share it with the people smaller or younger than you, right, and that's right. what was constantly, and it was happening all over the borough, everywhere. You know, yeah. and but, but, but the whole thing too that you just quiet just kept is that like B I call you B squared, but um um we would watch you guys and basically the next time we, we go to play, we take a little bit of something I saw you do. You know, you was tough. <laughs> I'm like, I, I gotta be tough too, man. You know, so, yeah. so yeah. I watched George Berry, man. I'm like, yo, I wanna rebound like him. You know, little things, man, but you know, sometimes it, it, we we didn't get to talk to you guys. Right, yeah. back, and I'm like, who am I now? You know that kind of thing, man. So we oh, we, we looked up to you guys so much, man. You have no idea, you know. And you yeah. never know who you never know who's watching. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Who's watching. That's right. Yeah. And there I'm were moved- times, and less and less is right, man. There were times we'll be like, you know, it's like I'm gonna be Bernard Boyd, and I said I'm gonna be George Berry, really? and we're playing <laughs> against each other, man. It's yeah. like, yeah. really, you know, yeah. oh, man. and um, and he used to get the best of me though. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you but, know, but uh, I moved to Texas after all. I moved to Texas after college. I moved to Texas in '87. Okay, and I was there for about 26 years. Then I came back home. But the time I spent there, I did AAU basketball. Okay, and I I had good teams, mm-hmm. but we started out at the bottom. You know that record at the bottom. Now we're here. Right. Yeah. We started at the bottom. We went to our first AAU tour. I'll never forget. Mm. And we went and got some t shirt just put a name and a number on it. And we got there. And all these teams got matching sweatsuit bags. Yeah. Deed is this. And I'm like, wow, how these guys, you know, it was like, wow. My guy used to go there and beat the crap out of the teams, you know. So mm. one day we were playing in a tournament. And uh, a Nike guy came up to me, said, man, I, I would like to sponsor a team. And so I said, what does it entail? He said, hey, we, we we give your kids. And that was a business deal. I get the kid all the outfits, bag. I just make sure your coaches are dressed out. Mm-hmm. And at the same time, you know, all you got to do is play in my Nike tournaments. Mm-hmm. Or play in my Adidas tournaments. I tell you, man, best experience as far as reaching out, that's what I did. Mm-hmm. I have kids overseas still. I have kids that came home, went to college. Now mm-hmm. they're coaching, you know, right. in Texas. Because I'm going to tell you, AAU ball is strong in Houston, mm-hmm. San Antonio, them Texas, and Dallas. I know. <laughs> it's a business. I'm going to tell you, man, it's, it's a business. I know. These I coaches. Know. These coaches, uh, I talked to three coaches. They they dead near millionaires. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. the owner, the owner, I'm like, how you get one of the teams? They got a bus. We played against. 
Wow. We got playing to go to long distance tournaments, you know. I'm like, wow. And it, that's like your I boy said, jo- it, that's your boy a, John Lucas. John yeah, Lucas. yeah. Luke, I took my son, I took my son to Lucas about three, four times when he was in high school. Cause my, my son did really well, but he after he got in college and decided he won't play after his after his junior year. Mm. But uh he, he, he was the quarterback and he went to the school that Mo uh Big Perk went to Ozan. Okay. My okay. son's name is Josh Boyd. Okay. He took his team to the football, number one in not number one in the state, but in his district. That same year, he took his team to the state tournament. Mm. Wow. And they lost. Yeah, John. You I tell know, you, man, so John, John, John Lucas, man, has got John. Uh, is, John is tough. Yeah, and I um, he has funny. a good, a very excellent. Yeah, I want to tell you, man, it's crazy, man. I um, because I started a program. I well, I, I got involved in a program here in Charlotte where I live, and right. before I knew it, John is sending like his his head trainers, like two of them, to come and see. Like it's like, what is this guy Eric Short doing in you know Charlotte? And I'm serious, yeah. and, they, and it's like they were like blown out of the water. I'm like. But I, I, when I heard what he was doing, I was blown out of the water because he's real doing big it, time, man. man. Yeah, he's doing it for oh, real. But real the kids big love guy. him you because, he, well, you know what he's going through, you know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. But if you get an opportunity to get invited to his, you got to be important. He don't That's just right. take anybody. That's- now, I was trying to explain that to my son, man. And he went through the workouts and he was like, damn, daddy, I thought I said, yeah, I know you thought you was. <laughs> now that's where you, that's where you got to get. Mm-hmm. Right. So he, like I said, I took him about four times, drove from um, Beaumont to Houston. And like I said, I was just glad to be able to coach some of my kids from the age of 10 all the way up. Mm-hmm. Right. One of them played, one of them decided to quit basketball and play football. Mm-hmm. Play up in can who plays up in the uh, Canada League. Okay. Then there's a, then there's a, I don't know if you if you look it up. His name is Willie Jefferson. Mm-hmm. Okay. You look him look him up. Willie Jefferson coached him in basketball since he was ten years old. Mm-hmm. Um, Ryan Grant he used to play with the Colts. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot. Like I said, just a lot of the kids that I I had my hands on. Right. That understood what it would take to get to where they need to go, man. Yeah. And I'm I'm happy. I even even white kids. Right. I had yeah. parents them white them parents see me when I was walking around Beaumont and any parts of Texas and they would say, Man, I wouldn't know what to do. I don't know how to thank you mm. for allowing my son to play under you. Mm. Yeah. How did you not, how not did only you... basketball? Yeah. yeah, not out of basketball, but you taught them also how to be a man and how to right. be disciplined. Right. How did you? How did you did, like? How did you like having that role? How did you like that? Oh, it was great. Mm-hmm. It was great. You know why it was so great? Because when you first get them, you got twelve, maybe eleven guys with all different kind of attitudes mm-hmm. and motivation and desires. And now, as a coach, you got to mold that into what you want them to do. Right. And like I said, when you see that process going down, going down, you look at it and say, wow, man. Yeah. That's why I always do it. from the bottom. Now we're here, man. I used to always tell my kids, when we go out to play in other places, pull your pants up, yep. put your hat on right, because yeah. you're on an interview. You guys think you're here just playing ball. Mm-hmm. You don't know who's in that stand watching mm-hmm. you on an interview. And, you know, I, like I said, by doing that, you're letting them kids understand that basketball is supposed to be fun. But when you go into these tournaments, and we went to big time, went to Vegas five times, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, we went to uh, Florida, played at the ESPN. Three times, you know, so we did with coaches sitting and taking notes. Right. right. What you need to do is just remember, 
You may not be able to give them your resume right in your in their hand, but they see your resume on the court. Yeah. How you expect your coach. Yeah. And it might not you know? be a coach. It might not be a yeah. coach. It might be an alumni who just right. happened exactly. to be at the game and he calls exactly. up the coach and say, Hey, I saw this kid, blah, exactly. blah, blah. You exactly. don't know who's watching you. You know, That's and right. and it's weird mm-hmm. because you know the world will always find ways to scrutinize what you do by like with the internet, another yeah. tool that you're going to have to pay attention to. But as an athlete, you should know to adjust. Just like when you're playing on the court, you have to adjust in life. Mm-hmm. Make right. adjustment, conduct yourself in a manner that shows pride in what you're doing and that not accurate. help the scout the way, like you said, or, or just thinking that it's just fun and not caring. You, right. have to, yeah. you know, and, and those things mold and they open up the opportunities for you to learn other things in other environments. Makes you a right. better husband, make you a better son, makes you a better classmate, make you a better student. You know, yep. and, 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 and no matter what sport it is, that um, criteria that's required to, for you to be a good player, if you take the sport out of it and fill it in with other things, it, the same applies. Same thing, yeah. same thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's why... And that's why we're all good men is because we transition that into our personal lives, you know? Yeah. By playing, by playing. Now, the George Merton, because he was, he was, I love George because he was culture about culture. And he yeah. used to, always used to share these little phrases and things with me. And, and you know, I missed, I met when I, I went to his funeral, but I, I was real Disappointed he passed away so soon. Yeah. Same thing as when Gil, when Gil passed away. I didn't know when Rodney passed because I always wanted to come back and thank these guys for putting up with me. You just did. I, I never Bernard, had you just did. Bernard, yeah. you just yeah, did. I never had, right. I never had a problem with Gil. Right. I never had a problem with Joe. But, you know, some guys play with certain coaches and they have issues with it. I never had problems with him, man. He was let me do what I wanted. If it was something that I did do wrong, they were shared with me, you know. And I, I just remember when Willie Davis and Craig Schmuck used to play with Gil. And he used to talk. He used to beat them and talk crazy to them, and I was like, "Wow!" <laughs> but they turned out they needed that. Yeah. They needed that talk to be tough. Because I met, like I said, George and, and, and Smoke. Because I played against Smoke at mid. He he went to mid when I went to Razzie. Yeah, yeah. He, he wasn't that. He wasn't. He wasn't. He wasn't that tough. <laughs> but playing under Gill, if you played under Gill, boy, you had it. I'm yeah, gonna tell you. Yeah. If you played under Gill, you had That's it. Right. I, I I thank. I really thank Gill for. Yeah. More I just want to. I want to warn you though. You know Craig Smoke's gonna see this. He's gonna hear you say he wasn't tough. You yeah. know that. <laughs> he knows. He know, and he's not gonna <laughs> deny it. He's not gonna deny it. I'm only playing. Smoke, with you. if you deny it, I'm gonna come get you over there, in Arizona. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, you know he's in. You know he's in Texas still, right? I guess you knew that, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's in Texas. I'm talking about Arizona. Yeah, he's in Texas. Car dealer selling yeah. Mercedes Benz, I think, mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but that's um, but a back few, to the point few of people. You, yeah, but you were talking about George yeah. and Gil. Those two men, man, they yeah. come up constantly with everyone because of the fact that, you know, everyone knows that George was also trying to get you to understand the culture of um, of the time that we were living here in America and um, and Gil, yeah. Gil was right. just, you know, trying to get you to just do right by the process. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And, um, he, was and drill, he was a drill sergeant. Dude, yeah. Expect, man? Yeah. And, and then the you Marine got a guy, Marine. and then you got a guy Marine. like Rodney Parker, who was just an a, a, a open spirit, who was just really just there to help. And that's, I, yeah, I mean. He, he was there to help when he got paid good, boy. I can tell yeah. you that much. Yeah, you better believe Listen that. Listen to me. <laughs> he got paid real good. That's yeah. my boy, though. But because yeah. he always, he always would want to help. He was one of them guys that right. would reach out, especially kids that didn't get an opportunity 
to get looked at. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Or got any calls from colleges. Right. He would try, you know, do his best. And um, I just hate that a lot of the guys that came after me, like Porter and, and Rucker, these guys never got a chance, man. You know, they passed away early at an early age. Yeah. yeah. You know, and it bothered me real bad. And so I you knew Stephen Porter well? I remember, yeah, I knew. I, I, was, I was one of them mentors for him, trying to get him. And then I want to share something with you. You were talking to George about Green that played up in Main Center. Mm -hmm. Al Green? Where I went. It came after, he came after me. Him, Derek Melvin, Barry, not Barry, uh, mm, who went up there with the, with the Main? I forgot who all went after, Rucker. There was a couple of other ones that went up to me. Mm -hmm. But that Al Green, like you said, boy, all I can remember, jump out the gym. He jumped out yeah. of that gym, man. What, wasn't he like the leading scorer in the nation? I don't know about all that. My my only one I know was my cousin that played for LIU, Charles Jones. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the only one I knew what led them. Lead nation in college. Yeah, I think I think I think Al Green. He 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 led the uh, nation in scoring. Like it was him and somebody else back and forth. You know, for a while when he was at Maine. Where he went to school. At. When he oh when he was at Maine. Oh yeah. yeah, of course I believe that one. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. You know. Oh yeah. But it's like you know those. He guys, was tough. Yeah. He would wear a mink white mink coat. Bro. <laughs> I never forget it. Man. I forgot where I seen him play in the city somewhere. And he came in with a white mink coat, bro. I said, mm -mm -mm. but you know, all them guys that was in the city was like, 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 uh, what's the guy that used to play the rucker come in with his, uh, old time, come in with his shoes and borrow somebody's shoes and score 50. Who was that? I don't know who that Joe is. Hammond? Joe Hammond? Yeah. 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 Well, that's yeah. like fly, though, man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. That, you know, but, that's my boy, but he cuckoo for Coco. Pop. That's how I always thought about him. Mm. Nice guy for a while. He used to always mess with me, mm. but he wouldn't mess with me physically. He always had something crazy to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, but uh, I, I just felt... He, I'm going to just say his environment he grew up in, that he made a lot of bad decisions, you know. And not knowing he could he could have been the top NBA player, ABA player. Mm -hmm. Because, see, him and uh, Moses Malone, I think, went straight from high school, right? I mean, straight from college. No, Fly went straight from Austin P. He didn't graduate, right. I don't think, to no, the he ABA. Well, he went to the ABA. You know, so uh, and Moses Moses Malone was the first to Out go of high from school. High school. That high school. Mom, yeah. yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but the skill level is but undeniable, yeah, just, though, right? <laughs> yeah. Big time. Yeah. Big time. You know, and and to see that skill level and to be part of that, it all rubbed off on all of us. You know that level of um, attention to you know being successful and always strive to be you know better than what we were. But we had coaches that did that, like you yeah. mentioned George and Gill and Lester Roberts and Rodney Parker. <clears throat> All of these men put so much into us that giving back is kind of like you know that the payment in full for them, you know, and. Um, I just added the right. fact that we respect who they are and we speak to them in our memory is, mm -hmm. you know, a testimony that they, that it was legit. Those men were legit, you know, and we're all eternally grateful, you know, for the things that they provided to us, you know, on the basketball court, as well as, you know, cultural information as well. So yeah. um, exactly. once again, it's like talking about the era of basketball in New York or in Brooklyn 
and what it was. It's like it's unsurpassed um, when you look at the whole body of work. Um, yeah. That it was an incredible environment, you know, for yeah. us all, you know. And um, yeah, just and, and then, you know, years later, I'm just to me personally, Bernard, I'm just glad you're still here. And yeah, um, thank you. I appreciate it. You know, I'm um, having conversations with you, man. And, um, and even in times that I've seen you, you know, like over the summer, it's always been short lived yeah. conversations, but we got to do better next time. Right. Yeah. You know? no but at least me, at all, I have man. to do better, you know. Um, but so, you're uh, we all do. Where are you now? Yeah, huh? Where are you? Where do you live? I'm in, I'm in Crown Heights. I'm in Brooklyn, Crown okay. Heights. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. Where at I'm Crown a, Heights? I'm going to come check you, man, next time I'm in Brooklyn. Uh, I'm going to come check you. Fire Boulevard between, all right, between Kingston and Albany. Okay. On <laughs> Empire Boulevard. Okay. Empire Boulevard. <laughs> with skating go. ring. Yeah. I'm in them days, baby. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man, just hit me in the head with that, man. That's yeah. my neighborhood, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. But it's um it's it's really been like a, a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, because you know, legends have to be heard from, you know, give their perspective on, you know, what the environment was like. And um and also for us to, you know, um, yeah. thank you for what you know effort you put in. Yeah, you know, your name is etched in our minds as a you know, as a legend. So um we have to show that respect. It is a requirement. Um, for that, and I just want to let you know, man, that we love you, man, and definitely glad that we got you on the show, man. I'm sorry for about the hit yeah, the other week, you know, that was my fault, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know. But, um, but what, did I, what, but what did I tell you? What did I tell you when you told me that? What did yeah. I tell you? When no you problem, then I said, man, it's no problem, yeah, there's no always problem. another day, yeah, as long yeah. as God keep waking us up. It's, it's okay. Yeah. It's just, why worry about something? Why worry about things we have no control That's over? That's right. Yeah. You That's know? Right. Yeah. And I say to myself, to you, I thank you and I thank Les for just stepping out your boundary to do this. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of guys that want to do this but don't know how to do it or, you know, their desire is to reach the right people, you know, right. and have a conversation. Because once you open up to someone and you conversate, you start to know them a little bit better. Right. And right. I, I, I felt that everybody just knew me for basketball. Right. I wasn't close like some, the ball players was real close with each other. Mm -hmm. I had a few friends, Mario Nelson, Eli, Joseph Eli, go mm -hmm. coming up, Pete Davis. I'm talking about doing my era. Right. I wasn't close with a lot of the other guys. I was close with Derek Melvin and his brother that passed away, got hit by that bus. That was sad. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, um, I just sad that I, I haven't had that relationship. Plus, after high school, I left. Right. And I didn't come back. I didn't come back 10, 10 years. Then I came back. I stayed nine years and then I left again mm -hmm. and during that time when I left that last time that's when I missed all the the, the friendships that I should have had with ball players mm -hmm. but I wasn't there you know and that's what I regret and what was so hurting that a lot of my paperwork that I had like you said don't worry about it but I can't help it, man, because I had some other things in my albums and scrapbooks that was dear to me, but I lost them through storms and running from them storms in Texas, Southeast yeah. Texas, boy. Yeah, right. get, get away. Yeah. A lot of times, you know, I come home. The house is okay, but the, the water damage. Right. right. You know, a lot of things had to be thrown away. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. like I said, hey, I'm just glad that I'm here to talk with both of you. You guys don't know how and how much this means to me. And like I said, don't hesitate to call or talk or come by or whatever, meet up for lunch, whatever. Because uh, I, 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 like I keep saying, and I know God 
has control of what's going to happen. Just glad I'm still here. And before I leave, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm surrounded about around some people that know me other than just know me through basketball. Right. right. Well, I tell you, man, I, um, that's weird. <laughs> I saw a video this morning, man, and it was like the guy was saying, the person was saying that when it's all said and done, um, and a lot of people give their own takes on this, but um, the thing that becomes very evidently clear is um, that what things that you should be caring about is other people, you know, because it's, it's, because it's not about you. It's not about me. It's like yeah, right. everybody around you, because we build relationships for whatever reason, unless you hide in a corner from people, you build relationships with people. And, and it hurts when that person is gone but when, but that memory is still there, and plus the ones that are still here are there. So um, that's one of the things that I thrive on, and I always think about because I don't know if whether or not tomorrow is going to be here for me. So I'm trying to get, try to get it all in at one plate. You know what I mean? I'm filling my plate up as much as I can because I don't know if I'll be able to go back for seconds. That's you know? all right. Hey, 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 here, have a plate for you, brother. I know that, man. I, yeah, definitely. I appreciate that, you know, yeah. but that's, but that's one of the reasons why we do what we're doing is, you know, to give everybody their flowers for people to know that, you know, this man had a life that, or, or even if it's a, you know, whoever it is, this woman had a life, you know, through that, through the sport that we love and, um, and whatever happens thereafter, you know, and, yeah. um, I'm very, and, and, and I concern myself with things that I have no control over, right. Other people, right. but, but I'm sure, right. but it's because I love everybody, man. It's why I'm doing it, you know. And and that's and I really mean that, man. I mean that from the bottom of my heart, man. I love everybody, man. And um, we just have to, you know, let the world see what we created in in our memories, yeah. you know. And that history it needs to be shared, you know. Yeah, exactly. Hey, um, yeah. You got yeah. anything less? Yeah, man. Yo, yo, got beat. anything less? Yo, B squared, you still got them big ass hands, man. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that, man. Yeah, I know, man. <laughs> yeah, man. That's funny. Yeah, I do. Hey, man. I do, man. Yeah. Hey, man, it's been a pleasure seeing you and talking with you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Yeah. God bless you. And I'm, I'm so glad that you recovered, man. You're doing good. You look good, you know. And I'm definitely going to come look you up next time I'm in Brooklyn. Okay. No problem at all. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I don't man. Feel, but can I leave with a prayer? Yes, please. please. That'll be fine. Oh, Father God, I just thank you. Thank you for waking us all up this morning. I want you to put a special blessing on Les and Eric's head right now, Father God. Keeping them, keeping them close to your bosom. Oh, Father God, as we become one, as we reach out to each other and listen to each other's stories. Oh, Father God, we just want to let you know, without that, without you, none of this would be going. That's so, right. Father God, this I just want to say to you, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Okay, my brothers, y'all take care. Amen. Amen. Pleasure. I love y'all. All right. Y'all Once gave, again, everybody. Once again, everybody. Yeah, it's another me. end of a great show. Bernard Boyd, legend, good brother, our friend. Appreciate you being on the show, and we'll see you guys on the other side. Take care. Yeah. All right. Peace.